Hey everyone, my name is Erica Anderson, founder and writer of the Gospel Kids 101 Guide. As Christian moms, it's not really a question whether or not we're going to raise our kids in the faith, but how do we do it well? How do we avoid the mistakes our own parents made? How do we equip our kids to seek the truth for themselves rather than just regurgitating talking points that we give them? It's so important to instill and empower our kids with their own critical thinking skills. The culture at large has become hostile to Christian beliefs, and kids today are constantly bombarded with negativity, doubt, and challenges to their faith. It's not just disagreement anymore, but name-calling and reputation-ruining stuff at times. As I began raising my littles, I realized I needed a better plan, a more robust plan than just, I'm going to take them to church. So I started to realize I couldn't rely on anyone else to show them how to live a faithful life. I'm their chief discipler, and that's exactly how God wanted it. Therefore, I realized I needed to take some steps to ensure that I was guiding them in the best way that I possibly could. I've got a lot to cover with you today, but let's get started by going through the 10 steps that I think are necessary if you want to start raising your kids as gospel-centered kids. Number one, model by example. Before you even begin to teach your kids, get your own walk on track. Your actions will speak far more than your words. Model a committed faith, walk in your daily prayers, Bible reading, attitude, repentance, and more. Take time to realign yourself with your faith, and you'll be better prepared to help your kids. Number two, make family a priority. Our first community is our family. We know God values you. We know God values this above almost anything else. Think about it. It's the first thing he did in the garden was create a family. Create space for sacred family time every day and don't neglect that. This builds a godly foundation full of trust and safety, and it's built in the logic of creation theology. This is how God intended us to be. Create biblical habits, number three. When my kids were, even when my kids are little, little, habits become ingrained in their minds. Think of those nightly prayers from when you were a kid. I know I still say the same prayer I learned as a four-year-old every night. Talk about a powerful word. Set rituals like prayer at meals, praise at dinner table, a Bible verse or devotional before bed. Make a habit of praising God for the sunrise and the stars, of praying when your little gets hurt or is scared. Reinstituting these habits over and over will create a lifetime of faith by habit, which has a lot more meaning than people give it credit for. Number four. Find a home church. It's time to find and stay with one church. Seek God's guidance on where that may be. But instilling the importance of a true biblical community from a young age will set the stage for a lifetime. It's important to attend church regularly and show your kids that God's house is sacred and important to your family. I know for me growing up, my mom always took us to church and it has had a lasting impact in the way I see the world and the way I view God and others. Number five, teach theology to your kids when they're young. Now, don't run away just yet. The word theology can sound daunting. Trust me, I'm not a pastor. But implementing basic theological concepts and words into your daily learning will help you ground your kids in the true meaning of the Christian faith. Best of all, you can learn with them. I've been doing this for the past two years, and it has been so enlightening for my faith. You can equip yourself and empower your kids at the same time. Number six, pray with them and for them. We tend to underestimate the power of prayer, but don't do that. Get specific about prayers for the kids. Say aloud the things you hope for them. Believe that God will bring them to pass. Trust in his faithfulness. Spend time every day praying with them as well. Short bursts for others will show them how important prayer is is. Number seven, invite other Christians to invest in their lives. Parents are the most important people in a child's life. However, surrounding them with other godly influences is super important as well. You want them to feel safe and trusting, able to go to another resource if it's hard to talk to mom or dad about something. This is where a strong church community can be an incredible resource for your kids. Number eight, be a servant of all. My mom didn't do a lot lot of this for me. But when I was a kid, you know, one thing she did, serve and love others with a beautiful heart. I grew up watching my mom volunteer at the homeless shelter, buy groceries for the poor, host friends who were down and out at our house, and give away a lot of money to charity. 
Model this servant love for others in all you do, and it will become a faith value for your kids. Number nine, share your faith regularly. Sharing your faith can be hard, but hear me out. When we're in a loving relationship with Jesus, that energy naturally flows out of us. Rather than think of this as evangelism, just speak openly and honestly to others about your life. If a prayer was answered or God helped you through something difficult, talk about it. When your kids hear you regularly talking about God, they'll naturally follow suit when he helps them in their own lives. And a bonus, number 10, is play Christian music. It may sound simple, and sometimes Christian music can be hokey, but I can tell you the words of the songs that I grew up hearing as a kid resonate in my mind even today. I remember the words about Jesus loves me and, you know, Jesus loves the little children and he's got the whole world in his hands and I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I mean, those are things that I will never forget. And when we ingrain those things in our kids from an early age, they become imprinted on their minds and on their hearts, making a difference even when you don't realize it. When we imprint the truth of God's word and his promises and his love in our kids, that's built into their brains as they are shaped and formed for the rest of their lives. You know, our brains are not fully formed until the age of 25. So when our kids are small, that is the time to start laying out God's truth for them in a variety of ways. They're going to have long lasting effects. Lastly, I'd just like to say, you know, statistics show that a child or a person makes the decision for their lifetime faith, usually sometime before the age of 15. So these precious years that you have with your kids as little ones have and make an eternal difference on what they're going to do with the rest of their lives and how they're going to spend eternity. Don't neglect implementing these important habits and prayers into your family life today. And it's not just going to help them. It's going to help you too. I look forward to talking with you more next time. Thanks for watching.